It's not the way it works. And you may not be ready for it. There's a time for patience. Here, as the hadith mentioned in Bukhari, hadith number 3953, Abu Bakr radiyanu, he loves to pray outside. He loves to be open about his Islam. And the Quraysh, they're giving him a very hard time. So he doesn't care about his wealth, about his properties. He doesn't care. He, he, I'm going to make hijrah, I'm going to leave. So he leaves. And he goes to an area called Bark Rimad. Bark, Barkul Rimad. And this is an area, even today, if you go uh, to Mecca, those people who have knowledge, they can show you where it is. I was with some of the scholars, they took me to this area. And here, he was on his way when a man met him. A man who was a Sayyid, a, a leader in the Qara'a uh, area and tribe. And his name is Ibn Daghina. Ibn Daghina was, يعني, as mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, he was an honorable man, a mushrik, a polytheist, but well respected by the Quraysh, he was a leader in his people, and he knew Abu Bakr radiyallahu from a long time. So when he saw him, فقال ابن دغنا اين تريد يا أبا بكر Where are you going Abu Bakr? Where are you heading? Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, he told him, أخرجني قومي My people have made it that I have to leave. They kicked me out. Not that they told him to leave. But when they made it difficult for him to practice his religion, he was never going to give up the religion. So it's as if they're kicking him out. فَأَنَا أُرِيدْ أَنْ أَسِيحَ I want to go and wander. سِيَحَ يعني when you go out and find فِي الْأَرْضِ يعني in the earth فَعْبَدُ رَبِّي And I want to فَعْبَدَ الرَّبِّي I want to go worship my Rabb. I want to go out in the world, doesn't matter where I go. Wherever I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَقَالْ إِبْنُ الدَّغِينَ إِبْنُ الدَّغِينَ said, إِنَّ مِثْلَكَ Verily, like the likes of you, لَا يَخْرَجْ وَلَا يُخْرِجْ The Arabi is a very beautiful language. The difference between the Fatha and the Dhamma, here changes. لَا يَخْرَجْ Shouldn't leave. لَا يُخْرَجْ Should not be forced out. So he says, somebody like you, somebody of this great characteristics that you have, the great manner and honor that you have, should never be kicked out, nor should he ever leave his people. And that tells you about the great character of Abu Bakr radiyallahu. And then he tells him, you help the needy, you give money to the poor, you keep good relations with the family, you protect the weak, you are generous to guests, you help those struck with calamity. And I, wa ana laka, Jaru, I am going to be the one who gives you protection. فَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ بِبِلَادِكَ So go and worship your Rabb in your land. Now this is a system the Arab had of giving aman or giving protection. And it's a system in Islam till today. Even though we have forgotten it somewhat. And the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave this to her husband when he came to Medina. So we know in Islam we honor this. So here, the Arab had this. They knew this from the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So here he's a mushrik, but he tells him, look, I will grant you my protection. Go back and worship all you want. Quraysh can't touch you. Now this is another very important lesson. Today, we never want to take on a hardship for somebody else. Like you know, if somebody else, a Muslim, a, a, a person of Iman, is in a hard time, you don't want to back him, you're like, it's his problem. No, I mean, stand up for somebody. Be of that honorable status. Here, the Quraysh, when they heard about the protection granted to Abu Bakr radiyallahu, they accepted, but they said, no salah and no Quran outside. The restrictions they put, they said, Abu Bakr radiyallahu cannot make salah or read Quran outside his house. Because they said that our children, our women will hear the Qur'an, it will attract them. They knew the Qur'an had that beauty. They knew the Qur'an had that effect. So they put those restrictions. Abu Bakr radiyallahu, 
He used to cry a lot in his salah. He used to cry from the fear of Allah. Not from the fear of people like today. But from the fear of Allah, from the love of Allah, from the love of the Qur'an. So he built a small masjid, a small building in front of his house, and he would go and pray in it. And he would recite the Qur'an loud, but it was still in the hudud of his house. And large crowds would gather affected by his recitation of the Qur'an, and his crying in his salah, and they would listen, and it would affect them. The Quraysh, they couldn't accept this. They went to Ibn Daghina, and they told him that he cannot do this. Ibn Daghina told him he's in his house. They said, no, if we can hear him, it's not acceptable. So he went to Abu Bakr and told him that I can't allow you to do this. Abu Bakr and told him, I am free, I give you back your protection, your jawab. And, and, and I am radaytu, I am happy with the protection of Allah. If you can't, if your conditions are that I can't make salah out loud as I, can, I need to, salah, so you keep your protection, I have Allah, Allah is enough for me. Abu Bakr radiyan wanted to leave. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him, you cannot. You have to wait till Allah gives that permission. And now a time came that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the Prophet alayhi salatu salam to perform the hijrah to Medina. And inshallah we'll pick up with that at the next class.